Welcome, welcome back everybody to Naeen Shorts or welcome to if this is your first time. I am Naeen of Kali Conversation. Actually, it's El Guzman, but you know, we won't get into that legal reasons. But we're back here in the dungeon of Physique Magnifique, our home at 387 Grand Avenue in South San Francisco. Stop on by if you're ever in the area, give us a shout. We'll be happy to play. Um, sticks usually, but we also do some nice stuff if you want. But otherwise, the gym has a lot more to offer than just our smiling faces. And by that, I mean Rick and myself, who is behind the camera making funny faces. But that's kind of what he does. <laughs> No, don't do that again. Please don't. That was traumatizing enough the one time. We're not going to get into it, folks. But here we are again, training. We're, we're back at it. We're starting at square one, really. Um, uh, for those of you who have watched the last two episodes, uh, I had a bit of an, uh, what you call it, an ego check? Um, which, as we've evaluated and as we evaluate everything that we go through and all the lessons that come along in our lives that can help and if viewed in the right perspective will help your own personal growth in your training it wasn't so much an ego check as it was just one of those moments where you have to be reminded of the grandeur of what's left to learn now what do I mean by that well we don't really have a ranking system in what we do however I do have a black belt which is symbolic and it, it means a lot to me but I do not go around telling people because it's not what I want to be viewed as um, and I don't want to I don't want to rely on that to be my oh look I'm a black belt because there are people there are practitioners that that's what they work for they work towards getting that black belt but then you work from your white to however many colors and pips in between uh, the curriculum that you have to learn and practice a certain way and convey to your instructors that you know it and can convey it to other people and you reach that black level and all of a sudden you're, you're up high and, and it's a great view there but what is there left to climb? and that's where I found myself at a certain point it wasn't so much that I coveted the title but I was reaching a point in my training where I believe that I was good. Not that I say that I'm not good at what I do, but I believe myself to be better than I actually knew. And there didn't seem to be much left to learn. Which is funny to say out loud because uh, I've always known and accepted it to a certain extent that yeah, there is so much to learn that we'll never really get to everything that we want to in our lifetime. But still, because of ego, because of emotion, because we're human beings, we get to a certain level and we walk with a certain air to us, a certain ego and pride in what we know. And sometimes that has to get shattered for us to realize that there is so much more and shortly after this experience that I had with my instructor, I'm revitalized. I'm excited again to really start from the very beginning and to see how much more I can understand with the very simple things that I learned way back when, eight years ago, with the mentality that I have now. It's the equivalent of reaching a black belt and realizing this is where the training really starts. I am now earned my white belt. The black belt is just a symbol that you learned enough so you can really start growing from that point. And I needed that. And I think a lot of us need that at one point or another in our life. And it's a natural thing to be reminded of, hey, you don't know everything. But it's a hard pill to swallow. And some people never do, never even attempt it. And oftentimes that leads to, oh, kind of getting in trouble or getting beat up in the martial arts world in places that you shouldn't be getting beat up because of that overconfidence that we have that yeah no I'm good but you're good in this realm maybe not outside of that and these are the kind of questions that have been popping up and now I'm so looking forward to class that much more than I used to be I feel like I'm starting anew I don't know anything but I have a better understanding of how I learn 
and how I'm going to take in information. So much so that even the most basic of ideas from our 1 and 11 that we do in our belated mind, this is the most basic two strikes that we do. And, and everyone has seen it. And in other systems, it's a one and a two. It's a forehand and a backhand. That's all it is. And everything that we do is based on the mechanics of the body. So now I'm really going back and digging, okay, what are the mechanics going on for me here? And am I utilizing it the way that I was taught to utilize it? I'm starting to question everything that I've ever learned. And it's helping me grow considerably. For example, one of the major things that we teach in the belated mind is that we don't punch, we don't kick, we don't block, and we don't back up. Now there's a lot to dissect in any one of those things, but I'm gonna concentrate mostly on the we don't back up part, which means we're not going away from our target. We're moving towards our target, which means at one point, we're close. Oh, that's another thing. We're close quarter fighters. Well, that stands to reason why we would be moving forward. Because we are here. This is how close we fight. Okay? But I was just talking about the mechanics of it. And the mechanics of it shows it out here. So then what changes have to happen in this very basic 1 and 11 for me to be able to live up to the things that I was taught the bladed mind practitioners do. Well, I have to adjust, I have to understand, and I have to really learn how to then adapt the movements that I'm already comfortable with, not so much doing it exactly how I was taught, but adapting it. So then I can enforce not just the mechanics, but the ideas behind it. So going back from the very triangle footwork and what it means, I find myself now doing one strike and doing multiple footworks from 111, from stepping to with the right, stepping with the left, stepping back, stepping forward. Okay, what other ideas am I missing in this exercise? If I was just doing it the way I was taught, then I would be here and here and here. But that's just me repeating the same exercise over and over again. I'm not advancing it. I'm not growing beyond what was taught to me. If I'm just going to do that, well then, it's just me repeating the same process over and over again, trying to get a different result. Insanity, right? Something has to change. And so, lately that's what I've been doing. I've been doing just one strike in every possible way, every possible footwork that I know how to do, and then moving on to the next one and doing it. Just single strikes, not even combinations just so I can better understand at what point can I generate the most amount of force, the speed, and even those aspects become different training modules for each one. Maybe one, I just wanna get everything to be smooth, everything to work, I wanna be centered, I wanna be, okay, my mass is moving forward, my mechanics are working properly, good. Now the next one, I wanna do it with speed. And it's just one strike. But that one strike analyzed a hundred different ways will give you a hundred different results. And it's just a basic strike. But now I'm dissecting everything that I possibly can from this one strike. So I can understand another example that I was given early on in my training. My teacher did this and asked me, how many times did I hit you? Now, back then, as it was explained to me, as I understood a little bit more, my answer was four. Or, <laughs> my answer was one originally, but it became four because then I understood from this motion, I can hit somebody with the puño, I can hit with the tip. Conversely, as I pull back, I can rake with the tip and I can hit with the puño. So, four different hits in that one movement. But those four hits have become so much more because this one movement whether done with a stick, is that. If there's a blade, there's that much more. If it's an empty hand, there are that much more options from the same movement as everything that I can now do in this space, from here to here and back. All the things that they can become, but the importance of it isn't that they were taught to me, is that I'm now taking the time to actually study 
the information that I have to fit my needs and more importantly, to fit my understanding. And what's the importance of it being your understanding versus just following the curriculum that you were taught? It's mine. It's for my use, not just here, but anywhere I go because the common denominator is always going to be me. So it has to make sense to me in order for me to use it anywhere. If it only makes sense in the classroom setting, then that's the only place it's going to be good for. And it won't go anywhere beyond that. Rick, would you like to join me, man? Uh, I don't <laughs> <laughs> Even if you don't, sorry. Hey, Have everybody. So what does that mean? Like the exercise, Perry Place Track. Okay. Right? Perry Place Track. This is how it's learned. Sure. And what we do, we dissect it. And then that becomes a parry. Okay. This becomes the parry. Variations of what this can become and all the things you can do for it. And now the place. Explore all the other things that you can do. The trap, all the different ways that you can trap. And even the punch itself, which we don't punch, but for the sake of the exercise, we deal with it. But again, this is just me doing and copying the things that I was taught. How do I take this further? Well, I understand there's three pieces. It's just the motion. It's to deal with the punch. Oh, okay. I changed something. Now, you can say that what I changed was that I tried to step in or that I wanted to break the rhythm of what was going on. But the reality is what changed in my head wasn't any of those things. Those are the happenstance of the idea that I changed, which was, well, let me do everything that I said earlier about moving forward, not punching, not blocking, and being a close quarter fighter. So because that idea has now changed, the Perry Place Strap changed this. Is it something that we trained? No. What I trained was the idea to understand, I want to get here, I want to get close. And earlier he didn't know I was going to do it, which flung his body even more. Now he understands that it's happening. But what else can that mean? Now we go again. I give you a parry place. It's not choreographed, folks. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> I wasn't going to take you down, you know that, right? No, man. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to do. <laughs> I've taken him down so many times that I'm, I'm thinking one of these days he's going to try to get even. <laughs> so I was going to stop it before. <laughs> That's how I think. <laughs> I'm a little smarter than he is. <laughs> Sometimes. He doesn't usually get startled. Uh, no. <laughs> he wasn't startled, it was preemptive. Oh, oh, preemptive. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to say it was that. I was going to crank. Oh, I know. I know you were. <laughs> That's why I grabbed it onto your hand. You bastard. But again, now I'm not exploring the moves themselves. We, we've done that. Now I'm exploring the idea of being a close quarter fighter. What does that really mean? How can I go from this distance into being a close quarter fighter, into the space where we should play? Now I'm not exploring the moves, the techniques. I'm exploring, oh, what can I do when I'm this close? Because I have to just commit to it. And all the ideas that come along with it. Thank you very much, Rick. Sorry, right. I just wanted to... I had to point that out. <laughs> this is how my training has now changed and evolved because I was reminded rather abruptly, rather uh, rudely, I might say, but effectively. Reminded that there is still so much to learn. And it's not a matter of, okay, I need to fill my head with all these different techniques or ideas, but I need to question how deeply do I actually understand the things that I have? Have I broken them apart enough? Have I studied them enough? Have I taken the simple concepts, simple words, even phrases that encompass our entire system or our training modules to say that I really live up to that? And more importantly, am I living up to what the art says I need to do or am I living up to what I understand of the art. 
And this becomes a very critical question because it's become apparent to me that you have to repeatedly bring yourself back and really question what it is you understand and why you're doing it. For me, it was to you know, protect myself, which I feel I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable enough with that. But now I want to see how far I can go. And if you put yourself at a certain level, you start limiting how much more you can grow and where you can go from there. So I'm very, very thankful for the fact that I do have an instructor that can kick my ass, not for the sake of kicking my ass, but as a lesson in itself. Because now I feel free to grow that much more, expand on what I know, and revitalize my desire to be here all the time. Probably not good for my relationship or you know, work and other things. So balance, balance is probably a good, good thing to learn as well. But I'm very happy with where we are right now and, and where my training is going. So here I am exploring, going back to the very beginning, not to be retaught, but to reevaluate everything that I know from the most basic ideas, from the most basic footwork, and seeing where it takes me, see what questions come up, what more things I can explore, how much I can do with it now that I'm thinking less of a technique and more of a concept. It, it's a fun place to be, it really is. It, it, being a new student, a white belt all over again is, is free in so many ways. So I definitely invite people, if, if you haven't gotten a, a good check, uh, by all means, please do. Figure it out, find out how you can bring yourself back to that beginning level, to that starting point where you have clearer eyes and deeper understanding of the most basic of things. Question, see what answers you come up with. Test them out. And then if they work, great. If they don't, well, you have more to figure out then. But it's a fun process to go back and forth. Because if you just keep moving forward, eventually you're gonna run out of road. But there's still so much more that we've left behind that we can still explore deeper and further than we ever imagined. Especially because we now know more. And things become clear once you look back with this new understanding, with this new perception. Not to mention the humility it teaches you is astounding. It puts less pressure on you to be something and more on what you can learn next. But, um, <laughs> I don't know, I, I can't really say much more about it other than go out there and train. Keep pushing, keep striving for better. And many times that means breaking all the illusions that we have of ourselves and where we are and what level we imagine ourselves to be. So best of luck to all of you. Um, again, thank you for joining me. Before I go, I'd like to remind you, we are Bruce Lee. Okay, the, it's in San Francisco. It, opening night is the 23rd of April. Um, there's limited amount of uh, tickets that can be sold for that particular evening, so check it out. Uh, we are brucelee.org is the website where you can get the information from the Chinese Historical Society of America. Okay, that's the building in which this display is being set up. And folks, I got a glimpse of the stuff inside and oh my God, it is really cool. And we only saw a little bit of it. They were still setting up so much more about Bruce Lee, about the history. And the idea is, is that this is only really gonna last for a year. The place is gonna be there for five, but they're trying to reimagine it every year so whatever is there this year might not be there next year. So don't miss a chance to get a, a glimpse into that, whether it's opening night or any time afterwards. Tickets uh, will be available for that um, at the door. Um, so please um, go support or just go learn some cool stuff about a legend. And believe it or not, folks, he becomes that much more of a legend every time I learn something new about him. He is not only more human, but he's also that much more amazing because of it. So for those of you who are fans, please do not miss this. And those of you who, do, who aren't familiar with Bruce Lee, this is a great chance to get to know him. So definitely look out for that. And uh, we'll try to bring you as much information on the topic as we can. Thank you again for joining me on Ayn Shorts. Uh, till the next one.
As always, three, two, one, cut!